So this is all about electric fields. It's a part of the AS physics syllabus in topic 8. Um, so yeah, the definition of an electric field to start is anywhere where an electric charge experiences a force and it's basically created by electric charges. It's represented by electric field lines and they're also called lines of force and that's what we see right here. So to talk more about these like lines of force that basically show the shape of the field, um, the field line directions, because they're arrows, um, they have the direction of the field and it's the direction of the force that's acting on a positive charge in the field. And that's important because uh, the positive charge basically determines everything because there's only two ways it can actually go. So um, if you're in an electric field and we know that, you know, protons and positive charges will be attracted to negative charges because they are oppositely charged. So the force that's acting on the proton would obviously kind of be like pulling it towards the electron. So the proton feels that and that's what the force shows. If this was different and let's say this actually said it's the direction of the force acting on negative charge, then it would look a lot different. It would probably look something like this because and that's exactly the opposite as what happened here because the electron would feel the charge like force to be attracted to the proton and so it's very important that we always draw lines that kind of extend out from the proton or from the positive charge towards the negative charge because that's what the positive charge would be experiencing um, the strength of the ele electric field is shown by the closeness of the lines. So the more close together the lines are, the more um, stronger the field is. You can see over here that they're about the same width. I mean, they do have a little bit of difference, but that's like my error. So this one we sh show, um, we call it a uniform field, and it means it just has the same strength in all directions. So the field lines would be parallel and equally spaced. but that's not the case for other electric fields. So these are two other electric fields that are important to recognize other than the um, uh, uniform electric field. This one is called a radial field and it's um, basically when the force spreads outwards in all directions and it happens around a circular charge. You can see that the closer to the charge, the field lines are actually denser. And then when you move out from it, they become further and further apart. And what this means is that um, the closer to this charge you are, the, um, the more stronger your electric field is. And then the further you, you are away from it, the weaker it will be. And this is another one where it's basically if this field was put next to something that's completely neutral. And we can see that because of this right here. Uh, this is an earth symbol and it's basically saying that it's assumed to be uncharged and at zero volts. You could connect it to earth and then um, it basically becomes as neutral as you can make it. So what happens here is that the field lines that are like extending from the positive charge being attracted to the negative charges over here but this is an, a neutral object in and of itself. So what is happening here is electrostatic induction, and it's when a charged object is attracted to a negative or a neutral object actually, uh, due to electrons that can move about. And remember that it's electrons moving about and not protons. Um, so let's say there were actually an even number of electrons and protons over here. However, because the electrons were attracted to the a positive charge here, they kind of moved up all to the top. And then the protons or the positive charges are just distributed all across the place the same, which means that on the top part, there is an overall negative charge. Um, and then on the bottom part, there's an overall positive charge. And obviously the, the force between the negative uh, and the positive is going to be stronger than the repulsive force between the positive and the positive because this is further away and that's why this will be uh, attracted to this neutral um, thing. We can also talk about the uniform uh, field. So we previously had something that looked a lot like this and then there were just like positive, negative, and it went like this. 
the how you make this happen is basically if you look back to here uh you have something like this and this is basically what it looks like they're a pair of charged plates and they're parallel to each other they're stood so that they get parallel to each other and you kind of connect it to uh, something that generates electricity and that will charge this plate negative and this plate positive so the most important takeaway is that these two plates they are flat and they're parallel so that they have equal distance between them at all points um, and that's important because if you don't then they're not going to be uniformly spaced field lines it's not going to be a uniform field so then we have electric field strength and that's defined as um, the force per unit charge exerted on a stationary positive charge at that point it's the amount of charge that's acted on a it's a, the amount of force that's acted on a charge in that field and at that point because sometimes you know the field strength at points differ so we can get the equation very easily from the definition which is basically just e is the force divided by the charge um, and electric field strength is actually in the units newtons per coulombs um, however there's an alternate way of calculating the electric field strength so we know that the electric field strength is directly proportional to voltage the higher the voltage the bigger the potential difference between these two plates and therefore the higher the electric field strength will be the more they're attracted to each other or the more they want to cross over to the other side um, it's inversely proportional to the distance between the plates d so electric um, force is just like gravitational force something that decreases as a distance and um, therefore the longer d becomes the smaller the electric field force or strength becomes and therefore we can have two uh, equations from this so e is directly proportional to the voltage e is inversely proportional to the distance between them and therefore we get this equation which is that e is the voltage divided by the distance between the plates however we have to put a negative charge here and that's for a few reasons so um, E, as we said, it's the strength that will act on a positive charge, as we saw here. It will, it will act on a positive charge. And um, the force actually goes from positive to negative. However, the voltage increases from the negative to the positive. And um, the electrons actually flow out of here in a circuit. And it goes along and it loses voltage as it travels along until it's at the positive. So which means that the voltage at the negative is highest and it's traveling to the positive. And that's why we have to kind of switch the direction of it by uh, multiplying a negative so that it can go with the definition, which is that it's just a force exerted on a stationary positive charge at that point. Um, so there are two units that we can use which is volt minus volt divided by meters, just like the thing that we found out just now, or newtons divided by coulombs. Um, and both of them are okay and acceptable. You can just use them in whatever situation that you are in and what is more suitable for the certain situation. So the force on a charge, we can derive that from like this equation right here. Um, the electric field strength is force per charge so force is going to be qe and if we substitute uh, this basically into this e we're going to get q is negative volt divided by distance now if we say that we want to get a charge that is negative so let's say there is an an electron in a certain field and we want to find out how much is the force that's actually acting on it then we know that the Q right here, actually the um, electrons have a charge of negative 1.6 times 10 to the power of nine, negative 19 coulombs. That's the charge of uh, an electron. And it's also denoted by E. So this whole thing, this whole value is denoted by E. So the charge on an electron is negative E. And if you times that in here, you're going to get negative E times negative v out of d which gives you ev out of d and that's an alternate 
way of finding out how much is the force and the charge. Um, so yeah, it's just like the same equation being put into different, like slightly different forms so that it makes your life easier. I also don't think it's necessary to memorize all of this. I feel like this is something that you can very easily derive um, in the exam hall. I feel like the more important ones are probably these two. So uh, when an electron travels in a uniform electric field, you can see that it's actually going downwards. It's for two reasons. First of all, it's repelled by the negative charges here, but it's also attracted to the positive charges here. So it follows this path. And this one we call a parabolic path. Um, and it's basically going to have the same speed horizontally. So in here, if we actually took photos of it during like I don't know, milliseconds, we would figure out that it actually travels the same distance horizontally all the time, which means there's no acceleration horizontally. Why? Because there's no force acting on it horizontally anymore. Um, the, there's just the initial force that set it to action and to motion, but it, it's not acting on it anymore. So it's technically in equilibrium, which means that it's going to maintain the same speed horizontally. But because there is an overall force on this that's kind of pushing it downwards there is a resultant force and f equals ma so it's going to have a an acceleration and because this is a uniform field um the force is going to stay constant the mass will stay constant which means that this will also be constant acceleration so if you took photos of it going downwards like that then you would figure out that you know maybe over here it traveled a little less and then a second later it traveled even more and then a second later it traveled even more indicating that it is accelerating and if you put these data points to find the overall acceleration it would be one value and it would be constant so yeah that's about it um that's it for electric fields uh, thank you for watching